Okay, what I'd like to do is get his body as straight as I can, so let's go ahead and adjust his hips here. Oh. We're going to move you. This is going to hurt, okay, buddy? Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Let's go ahead and get the Sager on. We're going to put some padding. It's going to go high up in your crotch. It's going to be a little uncomfortable, okay, buddy? Okay. Wiggle your toes for me, buddy. Good. You feel him touching down there? Yeah. Okay. You're gonna feel his strap get kind of tight up here on your upper leg, okay? Okay. We scoot it up a little bit more. You said you're 100 pounds? Yes. Alright. Okay, here we go. Here's that pulling I was telling you about, okay? okay. This is gonna hurt. Alright. How does that feel? Does it feel a little better? Okay. Check a distal. Good. You feel my fingers on your feet? Yeah. A little better? Yeah. Good. Look at your toes for me. Good. Good. So Linda, the child in this scenario has a lower extremity um, injury that's most likely a femur fracture. What immobilization devices do you have in the pre-hospital setting to immobilize uh, pediatric femur fractures? Well, it would depend on the patient's age and weight. Mm -hmm. um, for a very young child under the age of two, we don't necessarily use uh, traction. Mm -hmm. We would use one of our other rigid splints that we've already discussed. Mm -hmm. But for an older child that needs traction pulled on a, on a mid-shaft femur fracture, we would use either a hair traction splint or a Sager traction splint. And I've actually brought those to show you as well. Oh, great. Well, let's take a look at, let's take a look at those two devices. Most of us are real familiar with the hair traction splint. Um, you can see that for a small five to ten year old child, this is probably not an appropriate splint. It's extremely bulky. Mm -hmm. um, the ischial bar would probably raise the hip up too far mm -hmm. and actually manipulate the extremity that's fractured. But for an older an adolescent or teenage child, um, this is an appropriate splint. And um, we all know how it goes on. Just pull traction, you adjust this to the leg length. The problem with traction is that we need to make sure that that patient's on a long backboard. Mm -hmm. Because if, if this isn't on a stable environment when we move the patient, then the patient's extremity is mm -hmm. going to move as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, And then the hair, the Sager splint, and the Sager splint is one arm. You don't have to position it underneath the patient. The, the bar actually fits in the inguinal area. And then you pull traction um, down this way. So this this part of the splint actually rests between the patient's legs, so that when the patient's on a backboard, um, then then this is adequately secured, and you, you don't have to put it, anything else on them. Um, the problem with these splints is that they're just not developed for smaller patients, and and um, we just don't pull traction on smaller patients. Mm -hmm. We just secure them and get them to the hospital. 